Yeah, and everything will be recorded. So let's see. Okay, while well, people are still coming in, we can start with the introduction. So good morning, good evening, or good night, I have to say, to those who are in the same time zone as our, our speaker today. I, I just learned that it's midnight in, in Tokyo now. Uh, as you can see, I'm not Alan Jones. Alan is flying to California today, so I'm uh, taking over hosting responsibilities um, for this week and I think also next week. Um, so before we get to the main feature, I just want to quickly remind you um, about our, the seminars. I mean, you, if you're watching this uh, live, you have found the webpage. webpage. Uh, and know how to register, but those of uh, who will watch it later on YouTube maybe find uh, this useful. Um, I think by now everybody has seen knows the functionality of Zoom in terms of uh, the seminar, so I'm not going to explain this this page. Um, the main thing is that so far the, we've mostly dealt with questions at the end through the Q&A tab. Uh, if you have something that you really want to say, I can enable your microphone um, and, and you can talk, but so far it has been reasonably efficient. So doing it right through the Q&A tab, um, don't use the chat. So those are two separate things. You can use the chat for, for other things. Um, yeah, today we have uh, Maso Gress talking about, uh, okay, now this is Miyake, okay, you have to help me, or you have to pronounce that pr properly afterwards, Maso Miyakejima? Miyakejima, no. yes. Miyakejima, a volcano in Japan, uh, combining MT, seismicity, uh, and thermal, thermal imaging and, and self-potential. And uh, Maso is a geophysicist, well, slash hydrologist, working on volcanoes and geothermal systems. And we were just talking before. Uh, so he was mostly working with electrical resistivity tomography, doing his PhD before he moved to MT. Um, and he did his PhD uh, in France, in Grenoble. And since 2018 is at ERI. And is, if I see this correctly, you will join the Geological Survey of J Japan uh, next yes. year. Um, yes. Yeah, so that sounds uh, quite exciting. Uh, and before I hand over to you, I also want to remind you uh, of next week's uh, Emina. So that's going to be Stephen Hallinan on MTA Natural Resource Exploitation, a contractor's view of what's worked so far. I think that's going to be quite interesting for those of you who have an interest in sort of industry and applications of MT. Okay, so with that, I will stop sharing and hand over to you, Maso.
Okay. So you can hear me, right? Yep. Okay. So thank you for this introduction. Um, hello, everyone. And thank you for attending my presentation. So before I start, I would like to thank the team that organizes these EM seminars. So it's a great initiative to make science available to our community anywhere and anytime. So thank you again. So I'm Marceau Gress. I'm currently working at the Earthquake Research Institute at the University of Tokyo. And here I present the result of my recent work published in uh, Journal of Geophysical Research together with um, Ueshima, Professor Ueshima and uh, Professor Koyama which is related to the hydrothermal and magmatic system of Miyakejima volcano, inferred from four geophysical methods, uh, magnetotelerics, seismicity, cell potential, and thermal image. So the main motivation of this work is to better understand complex interactions between rising magmatic fluids and hydrothermal system since, since it triggers several volcanic hazards such as phreatic or phreatomagmatic eruptions. These hazards are difficult to assess and one of the reasons for that is that there is a lack of understanding of volcanic structure at a large scale. That is why if we want to better understand such system it's needed to perform multidisciplinary approaches. In order to investigate magmatic hydrothermal interactions, we focused on Miyakejima, a small volcanic island located 200 kilometers to the south of Tokyo in the Pacific Ocean. Miyakejima is a good target to study magmatic hydrothermal processes, because first, it's a well-developed hydrothermal system. It's a small size volcanic island, 10 kilometers wide. And finally, Miyakejima has a regular eruptive cycle every 20 years, 1940, 62, 83, and the latest one being in 2000. The 2000 eruption consisted of a series of phreatomagmatic events that you can see on the left pictures, followed by the deflation of the shallow magmatic chamber and the formation of a two kilometer wide caldera visible on the right figure with several DEM, so before the eruption and after the eruption with the caldera. You can also see the caldera here, two kilometers wide. So the objective of this study is to obtain the first large scale imagery of Miyakejima volcano in order to delineate and understand water and gas, gas rich zone, fluid circulations and magmatic hydrothermal interactions. For that, this work is based on four combined geophysical methods. First, we used two subsurface imaging techniques, magnetotelerics, to get resistivity image of the edifice and go back to rock properties and fluid content. Seismicity with hypocenters location in order to infer deep fluid circulation and interaction mechanisms with the hydrothermal system. Then we used two subaerial imaging methods to provide boundary conditions of the volcano. Cell potential, which reflects 
the, nat the natural electrical potential at the surface of the volcano, which is associated to shallow fluid circulation and electrical resistivity and remote sensing with infrared satellite images to easily retrieve large surface temperature map and get information about degassing regions. In Miyakejima, 13 magnetotelluric sites were installed in 2012 along mainly a 2D line from southwest to northeast, as you can see here with the station with the black triangles. Transfer functions were obtained using BIARP code and 17 period were selected between 100 Hertz and 2000 seconds. The model space was constructed with around 400,000 elements and accounts for topography, as you can see here, and bathymetry. The inversion was performed using WSM 3DMT code. Miyakejima seismicity was recorded at five seismometers belonging to NIED network. So hypocenters were located by NIED and classified in three groups based on their waveform features and dominant frequencies. Long period with the blue dots reported here, hybrid intermediate frequencies in yellow, and finally, volcano tectonic with red dots located here. We selected two hypocenters um, periods from 2001 to 2012 with volcano tectonic events because they were associated with the degassing activity following the 2000 eruption and between 2011 and 2012 we selected long period and hybrid events uh, because they cover the entire survey surveys of this study cell potential measurements were performed along magnetotelluric site from southwest to northeast Three profiles were performed. South and North line were connected with the middle profile in gray here in order to express all the data with the same reference point located at the southernmost site and set to zero millivolt. The thermal temperature map of Miyakejima was obtained by combining two infrared radiance images from Aster and Landsat 7 sensors. We then performed atmospheric corrections, calculate soil emissivity and vegetation cover in order to recover the surface temperature map using inverse Planck function. So this is what you can see on the right with the temperature map of the volcano. And finally, we validated this temperature with in-situ measurements. So now let's move to the results. So in this figure, I present a cross section of Miyakejima volcano along magnetotelluric station from southwest to northeast. I report the topography of the volcano and the surface temperature, which ranges between zero degree in blue and 180 degree in red. So this high temperature area is only located in the southern part of the caldera and which is associated with the main femur leak area. So we don't observe any thermal anomaly outside 
of this caldera, main thermal anomalies. The final electrical resistivity model was obtained after a total of seven iterations with the RMS of 1.8. On the right plots, I report apparent resistivity and phase between observed and calculated data on the right. In particular, what's interesting in this data is that we can clearly see in the central part of the volcano that there is indeed in apparent resistivities a conductor visible. So here, here I present the induction arrows using Parkinson convention for two frequencies between observed on the left and calculated data on the right. At high frequencies related to shallow depths, vector points toward the 2000 caldera, indicating the presence of a conductor in the central part of the volcano. However, at low frequencies, which means greater depths, vector points toward the south and southeast directions, reflecting the regional bathymetry around Miyakejima. So this has been inferred with forward modeling. So now I present the final electrical resistivity model along the same cross section from southwest to northeast. Resistivities range between 2.5 home meter and 200 2,200 home meters. The maximum depth of investigation is 4.5 kilometers below the sea level. And we have identified four different regions that have been confirmed with 3D forward modeling. I am now going to propose a detailed characterization of each region based on empirical electrical resistivity calculation, integrating all our data, but also literature. At shallow depths, we first observe an elongated resistivity body here in blue between 130 and 2,200 home meters. Such highly resistive regions often lie on the flank of stratovolcanoes. Here, based on the absence of large spring, as well as the absence of thermal anomalies, except in the fumarolic area, we interpret this region as porous unsaturated deposits with low temperature. So this electrical resistivity region was then estimated using Archie's law. So for that, we first assume rock porosity of 55% at the surface based on data published by Nomura and coworkers in 2003. Then we used an empirical porosity depth relationship to calculate the reduction of porosity at depths. Next, we assume the same homogeneous temperature of 15 degrees, which is the average value recorded by Miyakejima Meteorological Station. Finally, we assume a change of water saturation between unsaturated deposits at the surface and saturated deposit, water saturated deposit at depths. So using all this data, we can calculate electrical resistivity from between the surface and at depths. And we found a good match between these values and the value observed by the resistivity model. 
Thus, we, can, we use this 130 ohm meter value to estimate the water table of the volcano, which is reported here with the black dotted line. Beneath this resistive region, we observe conductive structure between 2.5 and 30 ohm meters. Based on our previous information, this region belongs to the water saturated domain. Such large conductors are often observed on volcanoes and geothermal fields due to the long-term alteration of rocks which form conductive clay minerals. Indeed, Yasuda and co-workers measured in the 2000 Miyakejima eruptive deposits a smectite content up to 20% of the mass fraction. And we know that this is a very conductive clay minerals, which mainly forms up to 230 degrees, revealing the temperature proxy of this conductive region. Taking this information into account, we have calculated electrical resistivity for three alteration degrees of this clay cap, low alteration, medium alteration, and high alteration with temperature of 50, 200, and 250 degrees respectively. And this corresponds to different degree of smectite content as well. Our results show a good match between observed and calculated data. And that's why we interpret this conductor. Uh, sorry. And also we have found that here, the surface conductivity of this region represents between 40 to 80% to of the total electrical conductivity. So it's quite important. So we interpret this conductor as a clay cap water saturated with high temperature ranging between 50 and 250 degrees. Now we plot hypocenters data with the blue, yellow, and red dots. So this is what you can see here. And we observe that this conductive region in red is crossed, is associated with mainly blue dots representing long period events. Hence, we interpret this vertical zone as the Miyakejima conduit where the degassing activity occurs, locally creating steam explosion in the surrounding liquid dominated region. And actually, this mechanism associated with small hydrothermal explosion is well explained by several research, such as Ominato and coworkers in 2006, but also Matoza and Shue in 2010. So this magmatic hydrothermal interaction also likely explain the change of water content observed in the Miyakejima fumaroles after the 2000 eruption. So here you can see the change of water SO2 ratio between 2000 and 2015. And you can see a clear increase of the water, which is associated to a decrease of temperature and also an increase of long period uh, activity. Next on the edge of this clay cap, we observe two aseismic resistive bodies with resistivity between 70 and 1000 ohm meters. We interpret it at a basement region with low permeability 
and low to medium temperatures. Now, shifted to the southwest part of the caldera, between two and 4.5 kilometer depths, another resistive body is visible here in blue, with value between 200 and 500 ohmmeters. This zone is associated with volcano tectonic events reported in red here, and it matches the location of the shallow magma chamber involved in the earlier stage of the 2000 eruption. Since this zone is connected to the fumarolic area with a temperature of 370 degrees after the 2000 eruption, we suggest that this resistive body represents partially gas saturated or supercritical fluid reservoir at a temperature of 370 degrees or more. In the right table, I show the resistivity calculation performed to support this interpretation. And actually, I present two cases. The first one with liquid dominated conditions. And the second one with a two phase region. So the water saturation is one for the water saturated uh, uh, case, while it's 0 0.4 for the two phase region. And in, the, in that case, we can observe that the two phase region can indeed explain a high resistivity area, while the liquid dominated region cannot. So we think that this zone could have formed after that the shallow magma chamber was drained in the 2000 eruption, and it could lie above the residual andesitic magma or above the basaltic intrusion involved in the second stage of the 2000 eruption. Finally, I report the result of the self-potential survey at the surface along the same cross-section. We can observe a W-shaped anomaly with an amplitude of 350 millivolt. The central positive anomaly is explained by the conductive hydrosamal plume induced by the ascent of magmatic and hydrosamal fluids toward the caldera wall. Next, the, we observe two um, two uh, anomalies. Uh, on the south and on the north, which are here related to the upwelling of the water table and the fluid discharge with springs. So upwelling near coastline due to the groundwater flow and springs. There are two small anomalies observed in this W-shaped uh, result possibly associated with the 1983 eruption for the southernmost, and this one is also possibly related. So based on our previous informations, we can now define the fluid flow circulation of the volcano. First, meteoric water infiltrate the soil until it reaches the water saturated region. And then it's being driven towards the coastline due to the water table gradient. Next, magmatic fluid 
released from a gas-rich reservoir, mix with the water-rich zone, creating this long period events in blue, before finally being released in the caldera and in the fumarolic area. Hydrosamal fluids that are not discharged in this fumarolic area can also flow along the edges of the volcano and reach the coastline with a spring or hot springs, but they can also cool down and forming convective cells. So based on our finding, findings, I present now an interpretative scheme of Miyakejima plumbing system, which includes temperature iso, iso values, the position of the water table in blue, the gas dominated area in yellow, and also I reported the clay cap and the shallow magmatic chamber, which was drained in the 2000 eruption between two and three kilometer depths. And also what's interesting here is that I report the magmatic hydrothermal interactions with the green stars, indicating these hydrothermal small explosions associated with these long period events. At the interface between the gas saturated and the liquid rich area. So in conclusion, we have highlighted the plumbing system of Miyakejima volcano using a multidisciplinary approach, combining four geophysical methods, magnetotellurics, seismicity, cell potential, and surface thermal image using remote sensing. We have highlighted the magmatic hydrothermal structure and characterize it in terms of rock properties, temperature, fluid content, and also fluid circulation. With in, part, in particular, we defined the position of the water table up to 700 meters below the surface, which has implications to better understand explosive and effusive eruptions on this island. We identified an elongated clay cap, which can be a ceiling for degassing activity. And finally, we revealed the magmatic hydrothermal interactions in the fractured conduit of the volcano, where we observed steam explosion associated with long period events. And this mechanism also explained the water content increase of the fumarole after the 2000 eruption. So a few perspectives. So now it would be interesting to study the spatio-temporal change of the Miyakejima structure until the next eruption, which is likely expected in a few years. So checking the evolution also of the resistivity, seismicity, but also temperature and cell potential. And also to better constrain this change using numerical modelings and try to retrieve possibly some uh, unrest mechanism. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you very much. That was very interesting. Uh, so yeah, please start typing your questions in the, in the Q&A. Uh, and I will read those out for, for the record. Um, so maybe while this is going, I can, I can start with, well, a couple of questions. So my first one is really um, about some, some, yeah, something simple about the, the self-potential measurements. So, I mean, I've done self-potential measurements in some geophysical practical on a small scale, but how do you do it logistically for these really long transects that you did there. Um, I mean, you don't drag kilometers of cables with you, I suppose, or how is it performed? So 
as I said, we have three profiles in Miyakejima. Yes, and you can see my screen, right? Yeah. Yes. So what is usually done is we divide each profile in sub profiles. Uh, for example, the south profile, uh, which is um, uh, four kilometer long, is actually divided in maybe um, seven or eight sub profiles. I don't remember exactly. And so basically each team is in charge of small profiles. And uh, at some point we connect each profiles at the same electrode location with the other one. So we can reconstruct after a while uh, this. So basically we don't, we don't have a cable uh, as that long. I mean, we could use it uh, a very long cable, but we, we, we use uh, some small profiles and we double check uh, measurements. So we make several measurements to check for potential uh, variations. Okay, I see. So you sort of reference sort of pair, sort of pairwise reference or sort of those adjacent profile by then uh, having the same sort of base electrode for them and and uh... yes, yes, yes. We okay. use yeah. mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, and before I read the first question in the Q and A, I have another one. Although maybe I should check that this hasn't been asked. Um, so. Um, you were saying that the depth of penetration is sort of four and a half kilometers or sort of depth of sensitivity, but I thought you had fairly long period MT data to like several thousand seconds even. So yeah, I'm, a bit surprised about, mm. I'm a bit surprised about that. Um, actually, we, we base this, um, oh, sorry, I try to find the slide um i think it's this one yeah. so actually um yeah that's a little surprising because indeed we have some uh, long periods and uh, what we have what i've done actually is to make forward modelings on each structure so actually I, I forgot but i made around 50 3d forward modeling to check the sensitivity of the deep structure. And uh, what I think is the clay cap is very large and very conductive. So I think this clay cap can likely uh, reduce the depth of investigation of the structures that are uh, below. So we have done several forward modeling and after 4.5 kilometers, we don't have significant sensitivity. Um, Okay. Uh, well, I, I mean, I suspect, uh, and I don't know how deep your your inversion domain goes. That yeah, probably you don't have uh, sensitivity directly below the K play cap, but maybe the long periods then you know at whatever 10, 15 kilometers depth, so much deeper, uh, start to have at least a little bit of of sensitivity. Uh, um, Again. Maybe because also we don't have a very large network. I mean, the volcano is not extremely long, elongated. Mm -hmm. I mean, so if we had more stations, uh, if, I mean, if the structure was much longer, the volcano was much longer, we could probably get a better resolution. Yeah, probably that as well. But uh, yeah, I think it's clear that directly below the thick conductor, you don't have, or you have very little sensitivity. Um, okay, so I think the, there is a question in the uh, Q&A. So Juan Pablo, what were the sampling rates for MT and self-potential? Mm. I suppose also spatial sampling. Okay, so for the spatial sampling, um... For cell potential, uh, if I recall uh, that you can see here, on the middle profile, it was uh, 100 meters. I'm not fully sure, something like this. While for the south and north line, it was a little less, uh, maybe every 50 meters. Uh, I, actually, I forgot exactly, <laughs> sorry. Uh, for the empty station, basically there are just 13 stations and it's around eight kilometer long. 
So they are mostly spaced by um, between half and one kilometer. And the problem is that we don't have any station in the caldera because it's very deep. So in this area, uh, of course, we don't have data in the 2012 survey. Yeah, maybe actually a question sort of um, associated with that in the locations of the MT. So was the limiting factor there the amount of instruments you had or where you could actually get and install them? Also outside the caldera, I mean. Uh, that's a good question. Um, actually, I was not there in the survey in 2012, so oh, okay. I'm not fully yeah. sure I can answer. I guess there was one reason was also about logistic because it's, uh, it's I mean, it requires a lot of work to install many stations. And of course, there is another reason is also about uh, volcano accessibility. I guess, yes, some region, some region could have been covered, but the number of instruments in 2012, maybe, I think at that time, they, the purpose was to make 2D um, profile and to make it repeatedly. So at that time, maybe 3D uh, inversion was not so common. So, or at the time of the project, so, yeah. yeah. Okay, then we have a question. Oh, actually, I'll read this first because it refers to the first question. So Juan Pablo says, he means the se samples per second for the um, MT, well, for the self-potential. Um, well, for the MT, we recorded at uh, two different frequencies. Uh, if I recall, three, three different frequencies, and um, the highest one was around um, 10,000 10, hertz, while the lowest, and of course, we, we recorded with lower frequencies um, uh, to get um, the other responses. So some were just uh, downscale, but some were just, uh, we had different records, so yeah. But usually we record it for the high frequencies just for a few hours at night. Yeah. I have the, actually, actually, uh, I have the, I can show you the result because I have a slide about this. Maybe it's clear, it will be clearer uh, here. So, um, so here you have the, 13 empty stations with a recording time. Um, and if I recall, so the, the reference station in um, for one hertz, which is a um, Japanese reference station. And this one is in Sakurajima, the 32 hertz, as well as the 1000 hertz. So which is a reference station of Miyakejima. So you can see that we recorded here uh, 32 hertz, 1000 hertz. And for the one hertz, actually, it's just based on the 32 hertz, which have been um, resampled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, another question about uh, self potential. I guess it's new for, for most of us. So, Char Sharok. Uh, okay, Purbain, I'm so I, I apologize for my pronunciation, Purbain Ranwand. Uh, could you please explain a little more about self potential instrumentation? What kind of electrode did you use? Yeah, yeah, it's indeed I didn't talk much about self potential. So we, we use the non polarized electrode. Uh, there are different kinds of non polarized electrode. So we use the, I think here, we use the PBCL electrodes. So basically it's just an electrode, which is also um, where there is a liquid part in this electrode to avoid to, char to, to accumulate charges. And this electrode is just, uh, we, we dig, on the, we dig on, the, on the floor at several centimeters depth, and we, we connect it to the soil, basically. So we just measure the electrical potential. And uh, we measured it at three different locations for each point. 
so then we can we can have some average value and check for potential um, um, change i mean check the reliability of each measurement so sometimes in some stations in some points we have more variabilities and um, sometimes we don't have so we are more confident about some data um. yeah and i suppose i mean from my vague memory it's i mean in a way it's a bit like taking the electrode from an mt instrument right there are maybe i have a slightly different sort of shape or so but the, the principle is the same and yes 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 taking it to the ground and uh, measuring the dc part of the of the voltage right i mean that's in a in a nutshell what self potential is if i remember correctly right yes 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 yeah so there is uh, another question from tyler mattison the periodic eruption is expected soon yeah I, I mean by your schedule yes this year or next year what installed long periods observations are cu currently being performed or planned yeah uh, that's interesting is there any buddy sort of getting ready for the next one well that's a good question and actually uh, probably uh, professor Oshima could answer better than me um so last year there was a survey performed so after 2012 so almost 10 years uh, from the previous survey, we another one was carried out, and but it's not permanent um, uh, measurement, so we don't have permanent uh, empty station, as far as I know, on the volcano. An eruption is could is expected, but the thing is, uh, 2000 eruption was kind of special in the way that uh, this large caldera doesn't don't these large calderas don't form very often so it's kind of a very important point in the volcano history so now we can see that there is some uh, ground deformation which is going back like before so increasing again um, so but the problem is that since the shallow magma chamber was drained and this caldera is uh, as i said it's a very important change probably for the volcanic structure uh, we cannot be fully sure about the site if whether the cyclicity will continue or not. Probably yes, but maybe since the shallow magma chamber was drained for the first time in 500 years, it's possible that uh, the volcanic activity may change uh, slightly from before. Yeah, and I mean, that's of course always the, the thing that keeps these things interesting, right? You, you see some periodicity and then all of a sudden, that periodicity sort of stops because, yeah, as you said, some some big event uh, happened. Um, okay, next question from Mohamed Gumar. Thanks for your lecture. Did you try to collect some samples and measure it, measure it at the lab to be sure of your measurements? I suppose the rock samples and um, yeah, resistivity or other measurements. Uh, so we did not collect. Um collect rock samples so to answer your question um, i just uh, checked from literature previous uh, dc results and empty results so there was a um, amt study from uh, zlotniki and co-workers who also found a similar range of resistivities although it was 1d inversion and the, um, sorry I, it's not the correct slide and the rock samples were measured actually uh, I, I mean, the pro city was measured by, uh, as I said before, by uh, Nomura and coworkers in 2003. So that's the only thing I used to base my interpretation. But I also check other volcanoes on the world, and we observe similar structure on many, many volcanoes, such as uh, Fujisan or uh, Stromboli, um, uh, Vesuvius. So we we are kind of confident. And also in some volcanoes, there are boreholes, so we can clearly see that we have this unsaturated region with low temperature. And as we reach uh, the water table, temperature increases, as well as um, resistivity decreases. So I'm quite confident about this interpretation. 
also uh, indeed we don't have here made uh, direct measurements on the battery yeah i mean certainly the i feel once the the general resistivity structure matches with what i've seen from from the literature as well in in other volcanoes and i mean these uh resistivity ranges um yeah seem to make a lot of sense okay it appears that at least for the moment there are no more questions so well thank you very much for your presentation again and thank you everybody uh, for attending um as I said in the beginning, next week we have Stephen Hallinan talking about MT in industry, so quite a different topic, but I think also uh, quite interesting. And yeah, with that, well, I would say good night to my soul. I, I suppose it's time to, to go to sleep now, and approaching nearly one o'clock. And well, a good day or good night to all of you else, wherever you are in the world now and see you next week. Thank you very much.